<clears throat> Is there something you want to tell me? Something you want to share with the class? Yeah. Sure. Here we go. <laughs> well, we got a special one for you guys this time, but that's not all. Look what I got going on here. Oh, yeah. I got a uh, buck hanging. We're going to take care of tomorrow. But when I flesh the hide, that is all the jerky I made. A lot of this looks pretty ready. So I'm just going to shut the heat off. And I just make mine in the oven. And I run it at 170. That's the lowest this will go. But I'm just going to shut the heat off, keep it cold, or keep it warm in there. Let it cool naturally. And I'll check on that jerky a little later. But right now it's ice cream time and a movie. I'm looking forward to this one. Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. We got a little bit of a different one for you. Um, I wanted to do this a while ago, but my capabilities weren't able to do it the way that I wanted to. So we just figured we're going to have a movie night. We got some ice cream right now. You still have some, right? Yes. <laughs> and we're going to watch a video. Do you know what video this is? Yeah. Have you seen this before? Shit, I don't know. We just got a little movie night here, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not going to watch the whole video. It gets into crypto and some other stuff, um, but I'm going to mostly look at where I was at as an individual at that time, and kind of how we've done it, some of the goals that we had. This was, I think, right after we got our land. We weren't living on it yet. Um, things were just starting to go pretty well for me online. Um, as I said, we get into crypto at some point. Uh, crypto is what paid for our house. Crypto is what helped us with a lot of the things we've done on this property and uh, still one of my main sources of income which is really cool. But this is an old video that Mr. Zach Bauer over in American Homestead uh, did with me. Um, I think the first day we met in person and uh, just gonna kind of look at who I was then, what I was up to, what my goals were, and then compare them to reality and how it turned out. You ready? Darling, as this first image of us pulls up, what's the first thing you notice? Your hair is smooth and slicked back. <laughs> My hair is smooth and slicked back. Don't you think Zach looks younger? Mm. Mm. That wasn't the first thing you noticed, huh? No. Anything else? <laughs> you think I look younger or older? younger <laughs> I think I look younger that was a mm -hmm. wow a very different time and just for frame of reference when I moved down to Arkansas I did have a pile of dreadlocks cut them off a while after moving here and then obviously grew them back since then but this was a time when uh, before I ever had a dreaded goatee when well, my hair was still straight slicked back at the moment but all right let's get into the movie hey everybody welcome to the homestead Zach again here and with Papa Pepper from Steam It. This guy's got one of the, it's probably the largest homestead channel on Steamit.com and he's been around there a long time, has a lot of experience and he's been showcasing a lot of knowledge when it comes to homesteading and he just got a homestead, uh, eight acres? Yeah, just about eight, eight, eight acres. Finally bought our land so uh, been observing it, checking it out, working on it for a, a while now but we finally actually purchased it. Now we're moving forward with setting up our, uh, our house and our homestead very exciting times. 
And so I know a lot of our viewers are all waiting for the day when they can be like you and have that land and begin building on it. And so uh, very exciting times for this guy. And he wow, that was right after we got our homestead. Do you remember what year that was? Hmm. I believe it was 2018 or 2019. 2018 is when we moved on to the property. But we bought it the year prior in 2017. 2017? It was like March, I think, when we bought it, wasn't it? Uh, probably. I think it was September of 2018 when we finally moved on to it. Yes. And perfect. how long was that after we moved down here? Probably like two and a half years, maybe. So, so we moved down at the end of... Maybe three? We moved down at the end of 2015 from Wisconsin, and we didn't buy our property till she's saying March. I don't I have no idea what time of year it was, um, but earlier in 2017, and it wasn't until the fall of 2018, almost three years after moving down here, that we mm -hmm. finally moved into this building on our property, and it was raw land when we bought it. And how was that process for you of moving down and then just? waiting a couple of years and finally getting a property and then waiting another year and finally being on it. Excuse me, it was a, it was a long process, but I'm glad we waited as long as we did and where where we're at, I'm very thankful for that, so. I think it was quite a, a process and a good, I think, maturing process and a learning patience and to wait upon the Lord for us and then, um, yeah, I wouldn't change anything about it, but I think when we first had the idea, mm -hmm. it was like, you move down, you move in, you do it. And <laughs> you buy a homestead, you start working on it. There was there was quite a gap in there forward. for us. That's yeah. not the way it happens for everyone, it's the way it happened for us. So There was question marks like every day because we didn't know where we were going to go or where our homestead was going to be. And we wanted to make sure that it was right for us. So. How long we were going to be where we were, so... It was definitely a long stretch. Let's see what else he says. He's, I mean, he's basically, you know, how we've said on our channel over and over is that you learn to begin, you learn homesteading before you actually begin homesteading. And that's what he's been doing. He's been doing that. And so he's acquired a lot of knowledge and he's sharing that knowledge with a lot of people. And it's made him very popular online. So learning homesteading before you homestead. Do you hear what he said there? Yes. You think that's what we did? We definitely did. I think we went like over our heads. <laughs> well, <laughs> and even like if we back up to Wisconsin pre 2015, mm -hmm. we moved. Mm -hmm. um, I really got into gardening. I had a friend who said, "Wow, you must really like gardening." I said, "I like to eat." You know, I mean that was what it was. We started planting fruit trees. Um, that was when our garden was like 75 percent. Hot peppers. Hot peppers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm popping pepper for a reason. What happened is I used to have a bigger emphasis on the peppers. Now I have a bigger emphasis on the papa because as we uh, kept having more mouths to feed, we kept needing other things other than hot peppers. Although they, they like hot sauce, but you can't live off of it. So yes, we, uh, I began to have a green thumb at that point. Um, one thing that I did was well, we were fishing up there and early in our relationship, you know, I taught her when the fridge and the wallet are empty, it's time to go fishing. Um, so we would eat fish. I would even do salmon fishing when they swam in from uh, Lake Michigan. Uh, Michicot, they'd come up the East Twin and West Twin rivers. Um, that was a lot of fun. And I did, uh, I forget what it's called, if it's locks or however you, no, it's not locks. If you, how you cure the salmon with just lemon juice, do you remember that? Mm-hmm. I, I let the acid and the lemon juice cook the fish and without actually cooking it and had some dill on it and stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing we did. I think we, that uh, is what it was called. I picked up a Hobart. Do you remember the stainless steel Hobart refrigerator I picked up? We went to some old restaurant and got it. I met my cousin Trucker and we picked up... I was going to build it into a smoker. Um, oh, I think I remember that. Yeah, you put it in the garage. I had it in the garage. <laughs> I, I was sad to see it go, but I didn't want to haul it all the way down here. I'm going to build a smoker is my plan. Lord willing, I'm going to build a smoker. But uh, So I was getting into stuff like that. I uh, didn't do any hunting up there, but we were making like a fish stock, right? We were fish soup. What we else were, were you doing? We were drinking that down real good. We did garlic honey up there. We were tapping our maple trees just before we came, and we yes. boiled down our sap and made 
Probably maple syrup. a gallon of maple syrup. We have, I think we got about, do we get 40 gallons? I don't think we got 40 gallons, no. but we got, we got something that I would like to just take the sap straight out the tree and heat that up and then put tea bags in it and just have it be <laughs> sweet tea like that. That was really good. Yep. You Preparing did myself for the South too. <laughs> we also helped our friend, our friend, um, oh, with yeah. chicken butchering. We did chicken when she butchering. she help, and we'll go help her. Canning, you learned pressure canning We learned first pressure time. canning up there. And we ate some of it down here, right? From that batch? Or no? Mm, I thought we had some from that. Maybe I not. I don't think so. Maybe not. So we, I learned how to can chicken up there. So mm. that was fun. I did. We got to kill roosters. Chicken bone broth down there as well. Remember I showed you that venison jerky at the beginning of this? Um, we're processing a deer tomorrow. We're going to save some for roast and stuff, but we're probably going to throw up another dozen or more jars of venison. But then after that, we got to call the roosters again as we're heading into winter here. We yes. got like 20 extra. Yes, we have to do that. <clears throat> and then what else did we do? Hmm. I was thinking about bow hunting because uh, my one friend gave me a bow, but I didn't do any hunting up there. I waited until I came down here. Mm -hmm. I was doing sourdough up there a lot as well and i was working on yeah uh bushcraft skills as well um uh, making cordage starting fires um, we were we picking a ton of stinging nettle stinging nettle yes we, <laughs> we were looking for ton. stinging nettle everywhere i um <laughs> i had a good stretch on my way home from work and nobody did anything with it it was just in the ditch so i would actually pick a bunch i'd put some broken pallet boards across <laughs> parts of my vehicle and i'd just lay them down in there while i was at work Pick them on the way into work, let them dry while I'm at work. By the time I was home, we'd put them in jars. Um, yeah, and then, yeah, wild edibles we were getting into. Some friends who put us up in their cabin right before we moved here were teaching us about lamb's quarters. I just saved a bunch of seeds for those. And Yeah, so bushcraft, wild edibles, um, providing your own food. We were I must have, I was saving my own seeds because we were making our own peppers with cross-pollination. Um, so yeah, seed saving, uh, food preservation. We were also getting raw milk at that point as well and starting our raw milk drinking up there. Yeah. It was yeah. illegal to sell in the state of Wisconsin. So mm -hmm. you could go hang out with friends and drink it on site and stuff like that. But uh, interesting, interesting <laughs> rules. No raw milk for you. Down here we can get it. Yes. I know some local sources. So I was also yes. making um, raw yogurt. There yeah. as well. When did you first see an American homestead? Was that when we were still up in Wisconsin them or down here? I saw them here when I was looking at homesteading <clears throat> videos. Okay. I found um, their American Homestead um, YouTube, channel? YouTube channel and I started yeah. doing uh, Jamie's recipes on making um, pudding, vanilla pudding and chocolate pudding. Nice. And then I saw their. I your puddings. Their, like, their channel would come up, the new tutorial channel. And then an American homestead, and they were making their sausage stuff and whatever. Our hard and salami. You saw that video. Because yeah. we got a video yep. about hard salami. I'll, I'll put it up over here. But I didn't know anything about Zach. I didn't know anything about an American homestead, any of that. He came on to uh, steam it, and I was kind of a big deal on there at the time. So we met up. I just knew he was some homesteader in the area, and she'd watched some of their stuff. And uh, yeah, that's what landed me here. On the day that he was filming this video with us so cool so this video was when we were all there together yeah you must have been you came with me you would have been okay. there doing something i think yeah the first time went, a tour I had to of his homestead that was really neat i've been there a few times myself since then and we've been there quite a few times as a family since then but i was pretty excited about his outdoor laundry <laughs> <laughs> so they were commenting on how excited she was to do laundry the old-fashioned way and uh yeah oh, they boy. figured if we were going to try to rough it in homestead and we weren't sure if we were going off grid or on grid at that point but uh they figured we had what it took to make it so. <laughs> so what i want to do is just kind of talk about you know why you got into homesteading you know what's the what's the goal for you and your family because this is not normal for people for a lot of people and, and they look at the homesteaders and they're just like, you know, what is it that makes you tick? So, Papa Pepper, what makes you tick? Okay, well, first off, I'd like to start by saying, you know, I'm not an expert in this. As he said, I'm just, I just bought my land now. I've been doing a lot of research, gaining a lot of skills, uh, and really a lot of my stuff is just documenting what I am learning and what I am applying and what I'm preparing for. 
Now, when we look at the homesteading lifestyle, um, what I'm looking for is a way to have stewardship over a portion of this earth and be able with my family to interact with each other and with the world around us from that kind of base camp. We recently, you know, a year and a half ago, moved from Wisconsin to Arkansas. Before that, I worked in a warehouse. I'd leave my family in the morning, go to work, come home later in the afternoon. Um, my wife was at home with the kids. And uh, we realized for multiple reasons that perhaps we wanted to go a different route. One of the reasons is that I believe there's been an attack on the family. And I believe that the family unit is, is the unit we're placed in. You know, there's going to be a man and a woman to have these babies, and, and, and it's a family. And to have a strong society, you know, you need strong families. Because if the, uh, if the whole isn't made up of strong, you know, pieces, it's going to fall apart. So I think what happened some time ago was that people shifted away from an agrarian lifestyle, and they became, when they weren't self-dependent, they became really dependent upon others, where it's almost like a slavery-type um, mentality. The Industrial Revolution pulled the men out of the homes, lured people away from their land to the cities. Then you had the government schools take the children out of the home. And after that, the women's right movement took the women out of the home. So everyone buys these houses that are empty for most of the day, <laughs> that they buy for debt, so they pay you know two or three times as much to get them, and they spend all life separated. And that's, that's the families these days. And it's not what I wanted. Exactly. It's not what we wanted either. And so it's one of the things we love the most about living as a family out here on a homestead. And it, judging from the emails and the comments I get from you guys, it's what you want too, because you see the value in that, uh, the majority of you do. And so it's really cool to see someone else doing that and seeing that as his focus and his goals. Um, so, <laughs> Does that guy sound familiar? Definitely. <laughs> do you believe any of that? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's amazing to see the ideas take place and you heard me describe kind of the divide and conquer of the family. Um, when's the last time you even went to town? Me? Yeah. Um, I mean, we took some trips lately, but... The last time I went to town, my wheels fell off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oops. Oops. <laughs> she uh, drove it to the wheels fell off. I forgot. Was probably like... I wasn't trying to publicly shame oh, you. Oh, heard two ago. <laughs> Uh, must have been two weeks ago. Okay, yeah, I went to town earlier today. It was, I told her when I got home, I'm like, that's the worst trip to town I've taken all year, which is really cool because it wasn't that bad. Um, but I pointed out, and actually, I took uh, coins in. <laughs> I took coins into the uh, bank today. Mm -hmm. I got like 70 bucks worth of coins, but they, I put them in the machine, so it gave me a, a printout. And it shows me how many pennies I had and what the total that was and how many nickels and how many dimes and how many oh. quarters and how many total and all that stuff. So I'm like, cool. this is this is really cool because my kids helped me get that ready. We checked to make sure there was no 90% silver coins in there first. And we pulled one wheat penny out. But as, as homeschoolers, I got that sheet so that we could go through and just kind of have the kids. So I'm going to say, hey, I have this many coins total. This many were pennies. How many were, you know, other coins? And... And then how many, you know, if I have this many quarters, how much is that? Because all the answers are on my, my, my sheet. Little so they're like, cheat, cheat. I'm not sure if I can copy this for you now. I'm like, well, why don't you find out? And then they did. But, uh, oh, darling. I bring that up because um, Mama gave up on her hopes and dreams and being a dental hygienist and things like that because she found more important things to do. And the more important things to do was as it relates to me and as it relates to our children. Um... I said I used to spend most of my time gone in a warehouse um, before we moved out of Wisconsin. I found better things to do. I want to be here with her. I want to be here with the children. So to hear me talking about just avoiding debt, avoiding the empty house. Our house is like constantly full, you know, because we, we homeschool. I try to do as much work from home as I can, and I do rather well with it. Um, we got a couple jobs lined up for, you know, the future. I'm pretty happy about some of them. Really good pay and really cool work. Um, but for the most part, I would, I'd rather find things to do from home. Well, one cool thing, too, about kind of putting that family back together. Um, our little guy, Bugger, when he had his first word, do you remember what his first word was? Mm -hmm. What do you say? Amen. Amen. We got done praying. It was lunch. I remember specifically it was lunch. It was the middle of the day. We got done praying. I say amen. He says amen. 
This is his first word ever. His mom's there. His biological mom's there. His biological dad's there. Every one of his biological siblings at the time were there, and they all got to hear it. That's what I'm talking about. About putting that family back together rather than paying somebody else to raise my child while I go work some job to pay off some interest. Like, no. So, yeah, you can tell this isn't the same guy. I may look different. But the words are the same. And, uh, like I said, to have all those things in the forefront of my mind. And to have that be the goal and being willing to move 750 miles away, being willing to give up on all we ever knew or had. For spec. You know, we, we had the speculation that it could work. Um, was absolutely amazing. And here's the thing, too. Um, I just say this as a testimony of having convictions from what God says in the Bible. Realizing the American dream may be a nightmare. It's time to wake up. And that there's a better way to live life. Uh, there's more important things in life. We did a lot of restructuring. We did a lot of other stuff. We ruled out and had to say no to ourselves a lot while we were being patient, you know, and waiting. But when Bugger was born, I came back from working. I was working quite a bit at that time. Mm. But at that time, I was able to actually take a two-year break from working away from my family. I don't say that to brag. I just say that as that was the reality of it. When you hear this guy talking... In this, in this movie we're watching, this video we're watching, he had hopes and dreams and goals. And he busted his butt and sacrificed all and denied himself and, and found something better to do with his life. And, wow, it worked out in ways that I never... I, th I think I thought it was possible, and that's why I went for it. But then to see it play it out was just a whole other level. Um, and I love waking up and seeing this lady every day and... Throughout the day, a lot of days, you know. I go to work, I leave. Sometimes uh, mm -hmm. I have to go to town like today. <laughs> but thankfully we're able to do quite a bit of things from home that supplement enough the income that I don't need to constantly leave. And one of the things is we don't have rent. We don't have a mortgage. We don't pay any interest. I don't. Ha we don't have any debt. That helps. Uh -huh. It really does. Let's see what else this guy rants and raves about, huh? You sure. enjoying it so far? Yes. So you got this land, what's next? Where are you at now? Um, at this second, um, me and my dad, we cleared some uh, space for a driveway and, uh, and a house site. We'll put in a culvert, take, grind the stumps, put in the driveway, and then begin to actually build our house in the hopefully very near future. And actually, thanks to Steam It, I have the funds to actually build my house, which is huge because I wasn't sure how I was going to get from this idea in my head to living it out in reality. And, uh, you know, work hard all day every day trying to make money with other jobs and uh while i've been doing that you know steam it has been creeping along um providing for us so it's actually worked out very well Tell me so <laughs> at this point it kind of switches gears and uh focuses in some online stuff with steam it some online stuff with the blogging for crypto and and good stuff you guys can feel free to watch the video i'll link zach's original video right there um but yeah, it's one of the ways that I was able to do things from home, and, and still do. Um, since I came online in July of 2016, the reason that I came online was to blog for cryptocurrency. I didn't really know what blogging was. I didn't really know what online was. I didn't really know what uh, cryptocurrency was at that time. But I found out there was a way that I, I could potentially even make some money. And it's because of that that I even have a YouTube channel. So if you guys appreciate the YouTube, know that that was kind of the gateway entrance to to the internet for me and I started up the YouTube channel just to share things on Steam it you know uh, Zach for instance already had a YouTube channel and then he found another you know place to do things online in Steam it um, and it you know allowed us to meet and hang out and met a lot of great people from it but you can see mama just covered up here she's feeding our littlest guy little chili pepper he's 11 months old mm -hmm. that guy is crazy I think was he late eight months or early nine when he started walking? Was it late eight? Nine. Early nine? Somewhere, Somewhere around there. there. But he would just sit there and get on hands and knees and just push up and just stand up like this, like he wouldn't climb up next to things. He just asked to nurse. This is the, the sign for milk for babies. And uh, Pinky was watching him down in the room. And she goes, Mom, he wants milk. And we look over at him, he's going like this. Like, that was the first time you said that he's actually signed that for you? Uh -huh. So he's not even by his mom, so he mm -hmm. can't ask her directly in a normal way. Way over there, and of course, you know, Pinky knows what that means. And he was trying to, like, suck on her chin a little bit. And 
you know, stuff too, so yeah. He actually expressed that and said that, and uh, so cool to see him learning. He was actually kicking a soccer ball around earlier. He'd go and pick up the soccer ball and he'd sit on the ground just so he could kick it at 11 months. High five. I can't believe, high five. Do it, yeah. Okay, you wanna give me a fist bump too? You're cute. <laughs> But uh, he's he's an impressive little one. But we thought that would be fun, um, just to kind of check back on this. I don't know. I've seen this before. Have you seen this one before? Not that you remember. I don't remember ever seeing it actually. Um, so I'll just give her a chance to you know see this video from back then, and then also kind of compare who I was, what my dreams and goals were, the plans of our family at that time, mm -hmm. and compare them to reality. Uh, while I was grabbing a new battery for the camera, I also grabbed this. Darn, what is this? That is our, I was going to say beef jerky, but it's venison jerky. That one's for you because this one's got a hair on it. Proof it's mm. homemade. Yum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, buddy. Mmm. Mmm. It's got good flavor. Mmm. Wow. That is mm -hmm. flavor dense. Oh, you do a good job flavoring these. It's reached like the third mm. or fourth level of flavor. Increase as I've chewed. Mm. Wow. You could be ready to do that deer up tomorrow, my lady? I uh, sure hope so. <laughs> I slept like four hours last night because I was editing videos and working on stuff and then woke up. Yeah. Woke up to try hunting in the morning. Didn't see any deer, but I was out there. Gave myself the opportunity. And they've been running hard since then, so we were going to cut this deer up tonight, but we decided it was too late. We'll just uh, wake up, do it tomorrow, and it's neat too because if I just drop the carcass on the table, you give them kids some knives and aprons, they just go to town. So, very cool. Mmm. If y'all want to watch that whole video from Zach's channel, Feel free to go check it out. Uh, you saw a good portion of it. But it does go on for another like six, seven minutes. So there's a lot more to it than that. We just kind of switch gears from what some of you guys are probably used to. And uh, hopefully this was nice for you guys. I just want to want to bring Mama Pepper in, some of her perspective on this too. And then enjoy some nice couch time, some nice shoulder time with her, and ice cream as well. Thank him for watching all that. Well, what was their? Thank him for watching. Ask him what was their favorite part. Let us know. We'll see him next time. And Tommy, you might start making some videos on water glassing and fermenting. Okay, guys. So thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it again. And let us know in the comments below what part of this was your favorite. And um, we were going to be looking forward to making some more videos on perhaps um, water glassing and what was the other one? Fermenting. Fermenting. Maybe a uh, dewormer ball for the animals too. Okay, yes, we have She's to do that too. She's got skills and knowledge up in here that we really need to release more of that to you guys. So we're going to work on that. Just be patient. We'll get there. That's, that's a virtue. Patience is a virtue. You should be more virtuous. Be patient. We'll get there. I got a dog video I'm going to make. Hold me accountable to it. I make that dog She's video. She's pretty cool, yeah. You got to tell modern dog. Yeah. <laughs> High five. Hey. Hey. Papa out. Mama out. There you go. There you go. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, 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 Other than that, be sure to like, subscribe, share us on Facebook and wherever else you find us. Go check us out on Steam It. Steam It. Steam It. Yes.
Uno Mas. All right. Pokemon? As long as it don't make you fart. <laughs> Is there something you want to tell me? Something you want to share with the class? Yeah. Or, here we go. <laughs> here we go. My new favorite toy. <laughs> he just got this for a present, but it's quite fun. You confiscated it and took it for your own toy? Mm -hmm. And boy, if I've been having a laugh squeezing this thing through here. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> you know, I'm just showing your face and they can't see that you're doing anything, right? Oh my, no. <laughs> Hold on, we gotta get a really good one here. You it's like the best fart toy in the world. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. You're so immature. I know. <laughs> so Can you give me a juicy one, please? Let me see. Whoa, hold it. Got to get a good squish in there. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Whoa. Woo! 